Hi, my name's Nicole from JC Creator Studios YouTube channel. I'm here to do a brief testimony about my life and struggles with mental illness and how Jesus has healed me from mental illness. So keep listening and um, I hope you enjoy my testimony. I struggled with um, mental illness since I was a teenager and uh, over the years I've had five uh, hospital admissions into psychiatric wards and uh, at one point I was on five different types of psychiatric medication. I was diagnosed with um, schizoaffective disorder at one point. I have suffered with um, OCD which is obsessive compulsive disorder um, and for those of you for those of you that don't know what schizoaffective disorder is that is a combination of bipolar and schizophrenia. I also um, suffered with de depression, especially um, well, beginning in, in uh, my early, my, well, my mid teens um, was when the depression um, first hit. So um, the first time that I got uh, desperately ill was when I was about. 22 years of age and I was over in Holland on a working holiday um, trip and that was um, where my illness really um, hit its peak and um, I didn't know I had um, a diagnosable condition at that point. When I became unwell I went through a variety of different symptoms, uh, one of those being um, mania. So when you're in a state of mania, you have rapid thoughts, um, disturbed thoughts, thoughts that are all jumbled up and, and don't um, match together properly so it's hard to form a sentence. Um, I had paranoia, uh, delusions. I thought things were happening like I would hear a voice in my head uh, condemning and saying things like they're watching you Nicole, they know, they know and this voice just continued with me for quite a while. At one point uh, when I was coming home on the aeroplane I thought there was cameras in the aeroplane. Uh, I'd be uh, also sitting in a room at a birthday party with a group of people and think that they were whispering about me and talking to each other about me and, and looking at me and I felt so incredibly uncomfortable. Um, when you're in the peak of a, a psychotic episode, you have intense feelings of fear and panic where your heart is racing and feels like it's going to jump out of your chest. You feel like you're going to have a heart attack. Um, there's intense um, anxiety and mental anguish. Uh, I remember sitting down in my bedroom uh, against the wall um, and I would be pulling at my hair and big chunks of hair would be coming out because of the stress of what I was feeling and I'd just pick at myself and and um, there was just no way of escaping this, this pain I was feeling. Uh, other other symptoms were um, depression in, in the face, my face felt contorted uh, like I had a frown, this real heaviness in my face or also um, I'd be catatonic so I could be sitting in a room and everything around me was um, well time time stood still um, it's hard to explain I'd just be sitting there and hours would would go by and I would it would just all form into a minute for me so I didn't realize that time was going but I was just sitting there in this, sitting down in this intense state of um, catatonia. So I, I had racing thoughts, and you know, my my friend would come home and would say, "What have you been doing?" And I, I was just had been sitting there and was just looking at the walls. And so that's what happens when you when your mind is in that sort of 
place of um, complete breakdown. It's a bit like um, you, you, your mind has gone through a blender and it's all jumbled up and then all these different symptoms start surfacing. Upon uh, the first diagnosis that I received, which was uh, schizoaffective, I really felt um, I, I was I felt a real sense of hopelessness for my future, and um, I felt inferior, and um, I really had a, a trouble coping with what was happening um, in my life now, and and the way that I was dealt with um, that diagnosis and and all, already feelings that I had of low self-esteem and and dysfunctional behaviour I um, just ended up um, going completely off the rails and went down a cycle of um, self-destruction basically so to try and yeah subdue the pain um, in the that I was feeling and also um, some symptoms of the illness um, a symptom is engaging in high risk uh, taking behavior and not really thinking about the consequences of it so yeah so what, what what happened then after my first diagnosis is I started drinking a lot and going out uh, of a night time I would go out sometimes seven nights a week until complete exhaustion and uh, I was very promiscuous and um, yeah I was found myself in, in some dangerous pos positions where I really could have been hurt uh, so that's how my life was for quite a while and um, I was also a very codependent person and um, I found myself going from boyfriend to boyfriend and um, I really struggled in myself with who I was and, and, and my identity um, and you know going from one relationship to another was not healthy and and I also moved around a lot um, I was very un unstable person I really found myself in an ongoing uh, cycle of unhealthy relationships and um, I also would go through periods of time where I got very depressed and would spend a lot of time in bed sleeping sleeping my life away and um, unproductive and not living the fullest life that I could um, I would go through periods of wellness but then I would symptoms would start coming back and I would become unwell again one one point I, I just I had trouble with going shopping and I needed somebody to literally walk around the supermarket with me because I could go into a panic attack and I'd be at home and I'd have these intense panic attacks where I, I couldn't breathe properly and and I'd be shaking and um, just completely dysfunctional it affect my work and I had to you know reduce work hours I eventually uh, met um, the wonderful father of my two beautiful children a few years after we um, started um, our relationship together I decided that I really wanted to have a child and um, I had a friend who had had a child and had mental health issues and she was a beautiful mother so I went ahead and uh, went, came off all my medication and uh, was quite depressed through the pregnancy but uh, I eventually had my son and um, I t loved being a mother it was an amazing time of, of my life um, and at that point in time it was also uh, I I had the opportunity to think about the future and the future of my child and in ways that I that I hadn't before uh, because I'd had um, this illness that I'd formed since a young age um, I think part of my 
development was a, a little stunted and moving forward wasn't quite as smooth uh, as it can could have been and has probably been for other people. So when I had my son, um, it was like a big leap um, into adulthood and responsibility and I really started to question the world that we lived in and, and how am I going to bring my son up in this world and 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 how it can be you know a world of term, turmoil uh, at times and um, I did go to church uh, for a, a small period of time when I was a teenager and I remembered um, the feelings from back then and I really felt loved and a, a place it was a place of belonging so I started to think about God and the thought of there being a God who is in control of everything was really um, a comforting feeling for me because I did, then didn't need to worry so much and um, do everything on my own. Uh, things started to become a little um, troublesome in, in my relationship at the time and um, this continued on for a few months and we eventually separated and myself and my son moved into our own house and um, at that point uh, I had been going along to a church um, and following these inklings that I had um, about God and uh, a friend of mine I worked with was a part of the church and and I knew a couple of other people and they were really uh, open and, and friendly and, and had an, a, a shoulder for me to cry on and talk to about some of the issues that I was dealing with. I was in a very desperate place where I was starting to become unwell again. I had a failed relationship and was raising my first child who was not even one yet. I was in this house uh, on my own and a person coming from a place where I had developed intense fear issues and night times were particularly hard for me. I would find myself um, in my bedroom at night and I would just go to my hands and knees and cry out to Jesus. The first night I was there I would cry out to him for help and I felt this intense pain in my head the first few nights as well so I would cry out to him and and say sorry Jesus sorry uh, for my sin help me please help me and um, I experienced some amazing encounters with the Lord the first encounter was when I was down on my hands and knees in a ball and I felt completely in, encompassed by this warm tingly presence that just completely cloaked my body and I felt the most intense love and peace and I it took all the fear away that I had and I knew it was Jesus and I cried out to him and I thanked him for what he had done for me I, I came upright and, and looked up and there was like a channel and I, I had a, a, a channel that was up towards God and and I had basically a, a direct link through Jesus up into the Heavenly Father and I felt that I was in this channel and the Spirit of God was all all around me and um, and I it was the most intense moment that I had had to date with the Holy Spirit and feeling his presence I felt his his comfort all around me cloaking me and I just kept on saying thank you thank you for what you've done and I really felt at that moment the intensity and the pain and how, what it was that he went through um, in order for me to be completely forgiven Jesus was in the room with me and communicating with me and I was communicating with him I was thanking him for what he had done for me and thanking him for helping me and he was um, 
reciproc reciprocating by by letting me know that um, I was clean and purified and all that sin was gone and he showed me who I was he showed me my identity that person that I had um, lost over the years he showed me Nicole um, who I was my strengths um, what I was good at um, my characteristics I really felt connected like never before the pain that I was having in my head I realized um, in the days to come would come back and I would get down again and I'd I'd cry out to the Lord for help and and then I realized that what that pain was was there was uh, demonic forces that had been in my mind that he was actually expelling away and as I was repenting and, and receiving his forgiveness he was delivering me I was still uh, very vulnerable at this point in my new Christian walk I didn't know a lot about what was happening to me and I also really wanted to be healed from this mental illness that I had and I really wanted um, questions to be answered and I just desperately wanted to be free from it uh, the Lord um, was trying to tell me to be patient it, it needs to be done slowly not to rush things but in my old nature uh, I had that habit of going ahead steamrolling ahead and doing what I wanted and not thinking about the consequences and I really was in this uh, habit of self-seeking and so I tried to um, I looked everywhere um, to try to, to receive healing and I believe that I had a mental illness because of demons and this is partly true but partly not true uh, there are other reasons why um, they contributed to my mental illness at the time but yes uh, demons did have some role to play but I believe that they were responsible for all of it so I went ahead and researched uh, deliverance ministries and I found uh, advertised on a Google search a place in Western Australia that were advertising that they believed in Jesus and they could help people like me that needed deliverance so I in my desperation I got on an airplane and, and went over and I, I was expecting there to be a church and that uh, it would be similar to my church back home and I came to see that it wasn't uh, it was a, a family that ha had children and they were practicing their church meeting in their home and alarm bells did start to ring however I really believed that this was the answer to all my problems uh, I was to find out pretty quickly that it was actually a cult and this cult um, didn't expel demons they in fact put demons into you uh, the worship started in in the house and the church service went ahead and the music was something like I'd never heard before you know, the, the, the bass it was very bassy and uh, that yeah it was just strange um, and all of a sudden uh, I saw you know full manifested demons standing in front of me I could see their facial features they're all in color and my spirit felt horrible oh, all sorts of things happened which I do go into more detail in one of my longer testimonies but to, to cut that that story short I did um, get out of there quick smart and the the it, it did bother me for many months later I had persistent um, intrusive thoughts and I also thought that because of what I'd done that I'd committed blasphemy of the Holy Spirit which there is um, like the unforgivable sin uh, which I hadn't um, I believe the unforgivable sin is basically not 
accepting Jesus as your Lord and Saviour in this lifetime. So if you don't accept him, then, you know, you can't be forgiven for that um, when you're dead. Uh, so I um, really went into a place of condemnation for a long time and and I really, really struggled. And I, the reason, part of the reason for that was because I was still a, a relatively new Christian and I hadn't developed a secure foundation of who I was in Christ and what it totally meant to be a Christian. I was playing straight into the enemy's hands and living a life out of doubt, fear and unbelief and it pretty much rendered me um, useless to the kingdom of God and being productive for Jesus and, and one day I decided uh, I, I decided that I needed to take a stand and that if I was to continue like this uh, I would would not have a very happy life and I wanted to to be able to share my testimony with people and, and what the Lord was doing and he was healing me yes I was making mistakes along the way but he still was healing me he was still healing me from all those broken destructive uh, relationships that I'd had and the past hospital uh, admissions and he was healing me by his unconditional love and I decided to research by looking in my Bible and also I had been talking a lot to my church family about um, what it meant to be Christian so they were repetitively um, as I was repetitively asking um, what it meant what what did it mean to be Christian and what was I to believe and and what core things do I need to hold on to and one of those core things is that once you are a born again Christian you cannot lose your salvation another core belief is that I have an identity in Christ and when I am in Christ I inherit all of his goodness and all um, of his promises they cannot be taken away from me I am a child of God um, it also means that I'm loved unconditionally no matter what I do uh, so yeah I, I research scriptures on identity and I developed a daily practice of um, daily spiritual routine so I would worship I would sing praises to the Lord I'd sing praise and worship music I would sing the, the Psalms and I would read my Bible um, and attend church services I was part of a, a healthy church family and through doing those things on a daily basis God healed me from those incidences um, in the past and I started to receive peace and it wasn't just um, short peace it was long lasting peace peace on a daily basis peace on a regular basis and also a substantial reduction in medication I went from being on a few different types of tablets and it has been two and a half years now since I have been um, completely off uh, antipsychotic medication Jesus promises us in his word a life of abundance and I am certainly now living in that promise um, he's really been affirming that with me uh, recently um, you know he, I went through a period of time where he needed to stabilize me and and mature me as a Christian and do things in my life um, that I might not always might not have always seen or, or, or that made sense 
but you know the fruit of that now is that I'm walking uh, a healthy life and you know I've I, I managed to have another child I've, I've got two beautiful children now he's restoring my um, broken relationship and um, I've been able to work I've been able to I'm currently studying uh, I've been able to share my testimony in a few different churches um, I have been getting involved in cake decorating I'm also part of the kids church leadership um, I do tap dancing on Monday nights I go to the gym oh what else um, I've created a YouTube channel I have a Facebook page it is the abundant life and um, it's all because of Jesus love so I do struggle a little bit at time to time with anxiety and that's just something that you know the Lord's still working on and, and um, I've learnt to be patient and to do things in his timing so I do believe that I will be completely healed from all mental health issues and uh, in this lifetime uh, I do believe I'm healed from schizoaffective disorder that's a certainty I believe I'm also healed from obsessive compulsive disorder so he's completely setting me free and I am not the only one uh, there's other people I found on the internet um, the vigilant Christian has a YouTube uh, channel and Facebook page Mario he has been healed of bipolar another person uh, he's in Canada another person is Andrew Goodwin in England if you YouTube ex schizophrenic um, or Facebook that he has been healed also from schizophrenia amazing so um, at the moment in my life I just continue to have uh, ongoing heavenly encounters on a regular basis and um, life has never been this good before it's just I enjoy my life and 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 I am peace and um, you can have it too so all you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart tell him that you're sorry for your sins and that you believe that he died for you and um, that he is your Lord and Savior that's all you need to do and uh, the Holy Spirit will come and come into your body and um, and then you're, you've been born again and you are assured that heaven will be your destiny you no longer need to fear death so my parting words today are from the gospel uh, Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 39 says Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. The second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. Thanks for watching.